So in this video, let's go ahead and take a little closer look at understanding what we've been doing in lab, how it relates to the graph and how it relates to this thing called phase angle and power factor. And, ah, okay. So what I've done here is I've done all the math that I can in Excel for an RLC series circuit. Okay. I have a 100 ohm resistor, a 0.03 uh, Henry inductor and a 0.1 micro farad capacitor. Okay. And I've calculated everything out here. So here are the different frequencies that are available. Okay. Here's what my X of L would be my X of C. Let's follow the patterns. As my frequency increases, look what happens to my X of L. It gets larger. And what that would mean graphically is my value would keep moving up here on my graph the higher my X of L, my, the higher my frequency goes. So if let's say this was zero, okay, oh, sorry. Let's say, you know, here's, um, so I'm at 75 here at uh, 400 hertz, okay? Well, by the time I get to 5,000, or 5,300 basically, I'm up to 1,000, okay? That will draw things, all right? Now let's look at my X of C. Now this will be in the negative here, all right? Well, in my X of C, you can see that keeps going down, okay? So although I'm way down, so I'm way up or I'm far away from my, my uh, X axis here, and so as my frequency goes up, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? And so what that does is that ends up adjusting my Z, okay? So when I'm at like, let's just say a thousand, okay? My Z is way down here, okay? Look at the difference between where my X of C is and my X of L is. Now, as my frequency increases, Okay, as this goes up, all right, my X of L and my X of C are going to start to change and my Z is going to start to move in to here until we hit to this line that I have highlighted, all right? This is the resonant frequency of 2905, all right? And what we see there is then I am right across here at zero. If I creep increasing my frequency, you will notice well, at Z, you'll see, oh, my X of L's are equal. My total impedance is just 100, okay, which would represent just the resistor. My current is at its highest, all right? The two voltage drops here completely cancel each other out. And my power factor is at 1, okay? All right. Now, as I drop below, as I go above my resonant frequency, look what happens. My circuit now is more inductive, meaning my X of my X of L is higher. OK. And my Z keeps changing and my phase angle becomes more dramatic. OK. And so this movement here of my phase angle from extremely negative to extremely positive, all right, all factors into how my frequency is changing my X of L and my X of C. Now, you'll notice here that my current goes, my current goes up and then down, according to this chart right here. Let me show you. Okay, come here, come here. All right, it goes up, it goes down, all right, okay? If I graph out my X of L, it goes one way, it goes up. If I drew my X of C, it goes down. If I were to do my Z here, okay, oops. Look at my Z, it plots down and then right at my resonant frequency, it is at a minimum of 100, okay? and then it begins to rise up again. Now, let's see if I can do that over again. Okay, now I can look at
my power factor. My power factor looks very similar to my Z, okay, in that, I'm sorry, my current, is that it comes up to my here, right, when I'm below my resonant frequency, it peaks out there, and then it goes back down. So just when I say I have a power factor of, let's say, um, 0.63, does that mean it's more capacitive or more inductive? I have no idea. I have to know, is it more inductive or more capacitive? Is my X of L higher than my X of C? Okay, so since power factor can neither be pot, it can't be negative, I have to know that if I'm trying to offset it with by adjusting my frequency one way, adjusting my capacitor size, or my inductor size. Okay, now, we always draw a phase angle in this sense right here. Okay, all right, but what does it actually look like in the circuit? And I think the best way to do that is to use the oscilloscope. All right, so here I have a very basic RLC series circuit, okay? Now, I have my channel one measuring my voltage drop here, and I know there's a ton of wires coming through here, I apologize, let me get this out of the way, okay? All right. So channel one is just measuring my voltage drop, my voltage total, okay? My channel two is measuring the voltage drop across my resistor. And this will essentially be a current measurement for this purpose because my voltage and my current are in phase across my resistor, okay? So now my frequency is, I'm gonna go ahead and set this a little bit lower. We'll just go to around 1800 Hertz. Okay, and then I'm going to go to dual. All right, so I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to ground both of these out to make sure that they are in line with each other. None of my positions are higher or lower. This becomes very important. All right, so I'm going to unground these. I've set this up so my uh, voltage is about five volts peak to peak coming in. Okay, and this is a representative, and then my channel two here. Okay, that I'm moving now, I'm going to leave at the same value, all right? Now, if I'm at 1800 hertz, okay, this is the line that I'm at right now. Oops. Okay, give or take. I am definitely more capacitive because look at my X of C compared to my X of L, all right? What that means is, my phase angle will be in my negative. What does that look like on an oscilloscope? Well, this is what it looks like right here, okay? So what that means is my current is leading my voltage, and it's a little tricky to see here, but look what happens. When my current crosses the line, and I'll move these over, put this right square in the middle, when my current crosses the line, my voltage total is way down here at like negative 290, let's say. Okay? All right? Compared to where this is at zero, meaning that my current is absolutely leading my voltage. Okay? What do you think is going to happen as I get closer to, the, to my resonant frequency? Two things are going to happen. One, my voltage drop across my resistor is going to go up. So it will be a little bit, you will see this one go up. All right. The voltage total shouldn't change, but it will change because of some of the electronic equipment that I'm using here right now. But we'll just assume that it doesn't. And also, this gap here will become much lower because there's two ways to look at this gap. We can look at it where it's crossing the line here, where my current is compared to here. I can also look at it as it's being way over here. Look where I'm at zero here, and then look how far that is before it gets over to here. That's a pretty significant difference, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. So watch what happens when I come in here. I'm gonna start to roll my frequency higher. Now I'm still not at resonant frequency. 
I'm at about 2600. Now look at how close they are. My current should still be leading my voltage because my X of C is still higher. I can see that it is. Again, I can move my position knob here. Okay. I'm still here at zero. But now look, I'm way over here. Maybe I'm at like, I don't know, 300 degrees. Okay. Look at the gap here. All right. The gap is much smaller. All right. Now, watch what happens as I approach into my resonant frequency. Look at that. Oh, boy. I had it spot on there for a second, and then I took my finger off. Okay? Unfortunately, my fine-tune knob does not work that well. Okay, well, I'm really close anyway, all right, and I can even make it a little bit closer based off of my resonant frequency. Now, look at that, okay? They are now perfectly in line according to this. Now, bear in mind, my resonant frequency that I calculated was based off an ideal circuit. These are by far no, by no means ideal, okay? They're probably a little bit off of a little bit of tolerance. So maybe this is my resonant frequency. And as a matter of fact, let's say I wanted to check my math on a resonant frequency. I could set this circuit up and look what happens. I could just adjust my frequency until I find them perfectly lined up and then I'm good to go, okay? So at resonant frequency, my power factor is one, my voltage drop across my resistance is maximum, Theoretically, it would be my total voltage drop, which isn't going to happen, but it should be in an ideal circuit, okay? My voltage drop across my capacitor and inductor are totally canceling each other out. That doesn't mean they're zero. That means they're canceling each other out, okay? I would have, you know, I'm here now. I would have 27 volts across each one if I were to measure it, give or take. Probably a little bit lower, but give or take, okay? And my circuit is now purely resistive. I have a 100 ohm resistor. Now, why am I not getting my full voltage total then? Well, let's be real here. I have a 100 ohm resistor, and I know the resistance of my inductor is going to be at least something, right? I'm going to be getting a drop across that, okay? So if I were to put, like, let's say a 1,000 ohm resistor in here, it'd be much less, okay? So... Now let's see what happens when I go past my resonant, my resonant frequency, okay? Look at that. Now look what happens. Oh boy. Now, if I'm to scoot this over, okay, again, line this up with my, where my current is. Oh, wait a second. There we go. Sorry, let me scoot this over. Now, when my voltage is crossing the line, my, my when my voltage is crossing, now my current is lacking. Okay? Again, let's watch this. It's more extreme within the couple hundred. Okay? Look what's happening here. One is lagging. So, right now my current is leading. Now my voltage shifts over and now it's leading. Okay, so my current, when I'm above resonant frequency, my voltage is leading. When I'm below, it's lagging. Okay, and so when we look at graphs like I showed you a minute ago, okay, that we were drawing up, those are just, those are just visual, visual representations of what's actually happening in the circuit. And this actually shows you what is really happening in the circuit, okay, with the voltage leading or lagging based upon, in this case, the variable of my frequency, because that's the thing I can most easily adjust, okay? And so again, all of these things factor into power factor and cost and tuning, and there's, a, there's so many different variables or reasons why this is important to know as you progress through your uh, electronic and electrical life. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope the explanation was okay. This is a painfully confusing topic and the best thing to do is just simply dive on in. The deep end's beautiful. Talk to you soon, bye.